and it's really very basic things about fluids that we want you to know. So let me just do a quick introduction and introduce some of the ideas that we need to formally talk about to uh, start talking about fluids. And we might have been referring to this from time to time earlier. Uh, I know I've definitely done that for one of them. So two main ideas that we are going to introduce are something called density and pressure. And um, well, I, I think I've actually mentioned the both words before. And it was a sort of before we had proper physics definition of both of them. So we will actually <laughs> introduce them now. So you might already know this, which is, you know, if you do great. Um, if not, now is when we actually cover it. So um, I'd like to introduce those concepts of density and pressure this way. It's a sort of an explanation of why we are now taking time to talk about these quantities after an entire semester of never really dealing with them. It comes down to how you, um, how you work out the mechanics when you are dealing with the fluids. So does any, everyone here have an idea of what fluid is? What are some examples of fluid? Water, that's what doctors talk about when they talk about you know, drink plenty of fluid. So water is an example of fluid. There are other kinds that we call fluids in physics that doctors wouldn't think of as fluids. Any liquid, yeah, oil, alcohol, um, acid, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, so any liquids, anything else? Yeah. Also gas. So when we say the word fluids, we are really talking about two phases of matter, liquid and gas. So. Um, that's what we collectively call fluids. And it's really, you know, the word fluid sounds like something that flows, right? Well, liquids and gases are what flows. Solid, like this, it can roll, but it doesn't really flow. So anything that's solid is not a fluid. Anything that's a liquid or gas is a fluid. So when we are dealing with the solids, you know how the mechanics works out. We have dealt with them before. So. You know, this box might be a typical representation of a solid. You know how um, we apply a force on it. Is this the direct tool? Okay. Uh, so you know how we apply force on it, and by applying force, we can move it around, right? Wow, you can't really read the letters, huh? Let me change it properly. Um, appearance. Let's make it green. Okay. Um, so you know how when I apply force on it, the acceleration you see is um, related to the, the force I'm applying. That's Newton's law. That's what we spent a good chunk of this semester on. And, um, and what we spent about a third of the semester on is what happens once you start including rotation. So that's when you now worry about, um, worry about torque. So if I dis, uh, enable rotation and I pull a corner of it, then there's a torque due to the force I'm applying relative to this corner. So you see it rotate, or if I, oops. I keep throwing it out too far, okay. So, um, so you know, this is how we've been dealing with the solids. You apply a force and that exerts some kind of torque and you know how to analyze all of that. So, the, our motivation for, include the, for introducing the ideas of density and pressure is we want to use these same methods to handle fluids. As in, we want to have some kind of Newton's law. We want to describe how when you apply force on a fluid, how that accelerates the fluid. But the moment you start thinking about fluids, you will see that we run into a bit of a problem. Let me, um, let me illustrate. So I'm going to cut out a little section here. It might be because I set the property thing and they might have tied the whole object together. So when I liquefied it, it liquefied the whole thing that shared the same pro property. 
So now let me liquefy just to this portion. OK, good. Uh, let me turn the color so that it's easier for you to see. Maybe something like that. All right. Um, yeah, I, I think those things were the, th these are actually solids. So, you know, once it's liquid, then you see that uh, it doesn't move the way it used to before. As in, you know, if I try to drag any portion of it, the program doesn't let me for one. And so, you know, I can actually, you know, draw a tool for myself and use this tool to splash around the uh, liquid. And, you know, when you see this liquid splashing around, it, um, the way it moves is it's quite different from how a solid object would be affected. So uh, let me get rid of this. I don't really want them. Yeah, I'm kind of new to this program, so each time I learn something. Okay, so you know, if I take this and when I lift it, um, the water it kind of moves out of way, right? So I can splash them, but they don't really. If I try to describe this uh, water, this uh, liquid, like I was describing any other solid object before, either using you know Newton's law with the translation. Or even if I were to include rotation, it really comes down to uh, the rotation. We call it rigid body rotation. And this liquid is by no way rigid. It changes shape constantly. In fact, in your science class, you might remember that was one of the property of liquid, that it takes the shape of the container. And if it's gas, it also takes the volume of the container. So, so we need to have. Uh, different paradigm to handle mechanics of this fluid, mechanics of liquid, but I don't want it to be completely different because I feel like all the laws of physics we need, we have already introduced it. And we want to simply modify it very slightly. So you know, by laws of physics, really this is what I mean. The biggest thing I mean is Newton's law. So Newton's law says Newton's law says that net force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? And I really want to be able to use this with the fluids as well. But the problem that I run into is that um, there's no I guess a distinct mass that I can talk of. Because you know, if I was handling this um, solid object, then there's a distinct mass that I can talk about. It's the mass of the entire object, right? And if I was, um, but when I'm dealing with this, this liquid, its shape is constantly changing. When I try to apply some upward force, the kind of portion where I'm applying upward force is changing. Right? So, so this is where the challenge comes down to. How do we modify this expression here in a way that we can apply to this uh, new type of object that doesn't have a fixed shape? It's always going to be changing shape uh, in response to force. It's uh, never going to have a one rigid shape then that we can handle like we have so far. So as you're thinking about the, the here's, let me give you one hint. This is the reason I like to use this simulation. Because actually the way the simulation itself handles the liquid actually reflects how we are going to handle it in the way we do it analytically. So you know, look at how the simulation handles a solid object like a solid sphere. And you know, like it. So you'd agree that everything you see in the simulation seems realistic, right? This representation of liquid, it looks liquidy, right? It, that's uh, how you would have expected the water to behave when it's being bumped like that. Um, so this simulation, um, so solid is kind of easy to see how it's simulating this solid object. Now, I want you to pay closer attention as I move this around 
And notice how the simulation is simulating liquid. How do you think a simulation is simulating liquid? Like in what way is it treating liquid differently than this solid sphere? Asia? Yeah, like a collection of particles. Because you know this is a crude simulation, you can actually see those discrete units of particles. As it splashes around, you'll see that it always comes out in these discrete spherical things. Like that's the smallest unit of liquid that it's simulating. And the way the simulation handles it is it has some kind of a mathematical model for repulsion between those, um, um, those uh, spheres. So if I suddenly apply a force, those spheres can kind of compress. But after some compression, they repel each other. So that's where they bounce up and down. So that's how the simulation is handling it. It's essentially uh, working out those interactions um, to describe liquid faithfully by taking this liquid and dividing it up into, OK, I'm going to get tired of drawing it, so let me just do this. Uh, by dividing it up into tiny little pieces. So each little portion here is what the simulation will use as that's our block of liquid. Um, then the simulation can, using the surrounding object, calculate, OK, what kind of force is on it. Then in response to that force, it will use however much mass this has. And it will use Newton's law then to um, um, sort of calculate what the acceleration should be. And based on that acceleration, it shows you all this motion that you see. So that's the approach we are going to take as well. The difference is that you know, in this numerical simulation, it has to do it in a discrete way. It cannot you know, take an infinitesimal amount of liquid, because that will take way too much computing power. But when we are dealing with the real world, these uh, water molecules are super tiny compared to any macroscopic object. So we are going to imagine uh, making this division infinitesimally small. As in, it, um, I have this particular um, sort of length element. That's going to be an infinitesimal. If, and if I take any particular block of water, then it's going to be described by what's called volume element. That would be um, simply you know, dx times, um, let me call this y, dx times dy times dz. That'll be the uh, volume element. And that's uh, kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's the amount of volume in this tiny piece of uh, fluid. And um, we are doing calculus, so you have to imagine that this piece can be as small as arbitrarily small. There's no limit to how small um, it can be. So this is the context where we want to introduce the new-ish concept of density and pressure. Because these two ideas will help us express the mechanics involving this little fluid element.